In this series of mine, we take a look at cars that were hyped and we try to see if the hype was worth it, if the cars are crap or actually worth your attention. Today we are taking a look at Toyota A90 Supra. And if I sound like I'm dying, it's because I probably am. I'm a little bit sick, but I'm really trying to get the videos out anyways. So just excuse my voice for this video. I hope in the next one I sound less like a dead person and more like the normal me. Yes. But before we get into it, remember to like and subscribe, and if you enjoy this type of content, I have more videos just like this, linked in the description, and more core content on my channel. Please go check it out after the video. Enough plugging. If you have watched many of my videos, you probably know that I love the A80 Supra, and I have an entire video about the 2JZ. I'll link it below, but I digress. The MK4 Supra was an amazing car, and I still think it is, which made it really tough for the new Supra. The A80 is quite a tough act to follow. Toyota knew this, were they able to create a car worthy of the Supra name? Technically, no, since they didn't actually make the engine, they had to work with BMW to get an engine, and thus a lot of people gave it flack because it's a BMW, as if that's a bad thing. BMW makes great engines, and their engines are awesome for tuning. If you think about the A90, it's kind of like the bastard child. <laughs> so the A90 Supra got fitted with the B58 engine from the 40i range. The engine is a 3 litre inline 6 twin charge, which is just a fancy way of saying it's a single turbo with the twin, twin scroll exhaust side. Now they got a lot of flack because the new engine makes 335 brake horsepower and the old one made 320 horsepower, so not a huge increase, especially if you think of how much time they had in between the A80 and the A90. But in reality the A90 made about 380 brake because the Toyota underrated the car's specs, which results in a 4.4 second 0 to 62, and because of launch control, you can basically hit that number over and over and over again. And I've actually seen 0 to 62 is closer to 4 seconds when you just launch it on the brake. So if we ignore the old Supra for a few minutes, the new Supra is actually quite a good sports car. It's fast, light, and has a great weight distribution, so it's awesome for track and road use. But why did we love the A80 so much? Tunability. 2JZ engine was and is one of the greatest engines you can find for power. It wasn't about how fast the car was stock. It was because you could get 800 horsepower easily. Well, I say easy. You still needed to spend a lot of money. But it was possible to make 800 horsepower on the stock internals of the engine. So how does the B58 compare? Well, I can tell you in less than a year they run nines on the quarter. And there are many with close to 700 on the wheels. Which is impressive, especially if you keep in mind that the car has been only out for a year and a bit. With newer cars, you fight with the computers, which see a lot of time. And now I can sum a year, you say, 700 horsepower. That's nothing. 700 horsepower is more than most supercars. And remember, that's on the wheels. But I hear you, 700 is not that much. Papadakis built a 1000 horsepower V58 Supra. So the, the engine can go quite high, if you've got the money. And he's putting it in a drift car. So you know they're going to abuse the hell out of that engine. In other words, the B58 is actually a really good engine, with a really strong block. If you want to learn more about Papadakis' crazy yellow Supra, I'll link this video in the description. He, he made a thousand horsepower in less than a year, and he did like a whole build series of the engine where he took it apart and built it. So let's quickly discuss the car's pros and cons. The 2020 Supra is a beautiful sports car that is a really capable stock but has a little bit of its father's tuning DNA. If you buy it to modify it, you won't be sorry, since there is already many solutions and ways to get dumb power out of them. And as well as power, there's a lot of exterior mods for the car as well. Negatives of the car is the Supra is selling for quite high prices, and you can get faster cars for around the same price. Um, for instance, the M2 competition. So you shouldn't look at the new Supra as a 2JZ 2.0 JDM legend type of car. The new Supra is an awesome sports car with a lot of tuning potential. It has modern safety features and fancy technologies. Are they practical? Probably not. Are they fast? Yes. They will surprise you, even if you get in a race with one. So for those of you that watched to the end of the video, um, is the A90 shitty or letty? Well I think it's it's letty. Letty like a <laughs> I'll check you guys in the next one.